a thank you. No. We can never thank you enough. We can never praise you enough. Lord, be glorified. Lord, be exalted. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you for everything. We honor you for who you are and for what you are doing in our life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ancient of days, we worship you. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we commit uh, this Bible study tonight to your care. We pray that you take absolute control. Pray that you do what no man can do. You honor yourself in our lives in the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be your name forever, oh God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Satan, we bind you. We cast you out of this environment, out of the airways. We pray that the Holy Spirit take absolute control. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to continue our teaching on uh, wisdom for prosperity and performance wisdom for prosperity wisdom for prosperity hallelujah for financial prosperity for prosperity all around and i want you to understand that prosperity is not only financial prosperity in the word of god prosperity to a child of god prosperity to a christian is not only financial it's not only money <laughs> It's not only money. Money is part of it, but it's not only money. The Bible talks about prospering uh, even in our soul. The Bible talks about prospering even in our health. The Bible talks about prospering in everything we lay our hands to do. The Bible talks about prospering in the field, prospering in, 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 the, in, the, in the house, prospering in marriage, prospering in academics, in every facet of life the bible talks about prospering i pray that the the that the spirit of god will help us in the name of jesus as we continue in this study I'd like you to open up your spirit because you will be blessed we started looking at the life of zycheus this man called zycheus one the bible call him a very short man he was a short man i don't know if he if he was the shortest person in the Bible in Bible days, but the Bible talks about him as a short man. So I am not the one calling him short. The Bible calls him a short man. So we looked at Zacchaeus and we also look at the word of God, our team. Let's look at the team, our team's test for this study. Uh, this month. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, so Jesus was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, myself, and yourself, true his poverty might become rich. That's, that's, that's favor. That's grace. That's unmerited. That's willful surrender of his, of his wealth, of his riches, of his prosperous life to us as children of God. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful. And so we started looking at the story of Zacchaeus from Luke chapter 19, verse 1. We looked at verse 2. We look at verse 3. We continue. And, and I want us to build on that, the life of that man. How that man gained, got his wealth and how that man encountered God, you know, after so many years of getting his wealth, having wealth, you know, ill-gotten wealth you know, wealth or riches that he, he got from using the wrong way, using the wrong approach, you know, he, he, he got that and how he encountered Jesus and his life began to transform. 
his life began to transform. God loves riches. God loves wealth. God loves money. God loves good health. God wants us to have good health. God wants us to have riches. God wants us to have money. You know, uh, Andrew, God wants you to have money. And uh, all the brethren here, God wants you to have money. God wants you to be wealthy. God wants you to be healthy. Not just wealthy, but healthy. God wants us healthy. Very, very important. So we looked at Luke chapter 19. You know, verse one, I'll just read verse one and two, and then I'll continue from where we stopped last Sunday. Jesus entered Jericho, and he made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region. And he had become very rich because of that. He had become very rich because of that. Now, uh, we started talking about Jericho, how Jesus entered Jericho. Now, what is Jericho? Jericho means this, the cost city, the city of cost. You know, uh, because of the cost that Joshua placed on that city in Joshua chapter 6, verse 26. So that place became a cost city. And that was, that, that, that's exactly what um, I likened it to the world that we live today, the system of the world we live today, the, the environment we live, this art realm that we all are. Uh, are living today. Now, I liken Jericho to be that word. I liken this word to be Jericho. Because since Adam lost, Adam and Eve lost the glory in the garden, it has been, you know, God placed a curse. And that curse has continued from generation to generation until Jesus came. When Jesus showed up on the scene, things changed. And that's why our test, our team test is still very, very relevant to us today. I like that song. Uh, the name of Jesus is still the same today. He's still the same today. So let's look at the life of Zacchaeus. Last week, we, we, we did a lot of, uh, of teaching on Zacchaeus, you know, but today, I know the last thing I said, uh, the last two things I talked about on Sunday was we don't come to church to see a preacher. It's a wrong way to see it. When we come to church, you're not going. When you go to a crusade, you go to a revival, or you go to a seminar, you go, you know, people motivate people to go somewhere. But you must understand that as you move, as you get to that place, someone may have invited you, someone may have to ask you to come around or come along. However, your motive of going to the church or to that place of worship shouldn't be to see a preacher. We saw this in the life of, of, of Zacchaeus. We come to the church to see Jesus. So Zacchaeus came to see Jesus in the midst of the crowd and the noise. You can see in the midst of all that, the Lord's attention zooms in on Zacchaeus. He zooms in on the one who was looking for him. Remember I said on Sunday that riches is good, wealth is good, money is good. In fact, the Bible talks about money. Money answers all things. And we're still going, we're still building on this. We'll get to, to because Jesus actually talked more about money in his parables. Jesus gave 37 parables. 16 of those parables were about finances and how to handle the wealth and the possessions that he gave to us. 16 out of the 37 parables. And, and we, 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 we see in scripture from Genesis to Revelation. If you do a, a, a bit of word study, you will observe that about 500 times the Bible talked, there were, there were verses of the scripture that referred to prayers. But there were over 2,000 places that the Bible talks about finances. 
So God is interested in our finances. God is super, super interested. When we get to those things, we'll talk more about that. But you see, your foundation is very important. Your foundation, our foundation is very important. Now, let me quickly say here that all prosperity, I'll put it in this way, it is not every money that, and it is not every money, it's not every way, I'll put it that way, it's not every way that you can that you get money or you acquire money, you acquire prosperity, you acquire wealth that is acceptable by God. It's not every way. There are ways that when you acquire wealth and, find, and riches and money, God will be happy with you. There are ways that when you acquire it, God will not be happy because that's no way. You don't kill to prosper. You don't, you don't, you don't steal to prosper. It's, it's, it's against scripture and the game biblical principle is against the, the way it should be you don't you don't bring somebody down so that you rise that is not the order in the things of this way allow god to do that one because he said i i i i set up things and i remove and that's his own role let him do that let him do that one so you do not you do not swindle a brother you do not uh, 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 systematically dis, uh, remove a, a brother. You don't take what belongs to people and, and prosper with it and say, wow, the Lord has prospered me. No. No. When you steal and pay tax from it, you have not given to God. You have just wasted your time because your mot your in fact, the source is not godly. You see, Prosperity is beautiful. God loves us to be wealthy, but we need to understand that the foundation on which we build our wealth and our resources and our possessions, is it matters a lot. In fact, Jesus said, he said the, the, the life of a man, he was talking about the life of a man. He said it does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses. What Jesus was trying to say there is to rubbish our house that we, 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 we you think, oh, we have big house, we bought small house, you buy this, you build this, mansions here and there, uh, to rubbish what we think we have, fat bank account and all this. Jesus is saying, I love you to be wealthy, but your life does not consist on the abundance of the things you possess. He just punctures the balloon there. That's a, he's not saying don't be wealthy. He's not saying we shouldn't be rich. That's his will for us to be wealthy. But he's trying to say, hey, the foundation must not be those things. You don't build foundation on things. You build foundation on him. He is the foundation. The, you see, Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus. And Jesus zoomed in spiritually on Zacchaeus. Immediately he got to that point, the Bible says he looked up and said to Zacchaeus, today, he zooms in on the one that needed him. Jesus, Jesus stopped. The crowd was there. The crowd everywhere. But Jesus, brother, sister, Jesus stopped for a man but, but what about all these people? Later you discover that sometimes people look for things from, that they can get from God, what they can get from you, not you. I don't know how to say this now. There are people that look for, okay. They, they, are, they are after what they can get from you, not you. They are not interested in you. You do well, you don't do well, whatever. It's not their headache. As long as they can get something from you. And that's how many people, people relate with God. And it's a wrong way of relating with God or relating with people. It's a very, very wrong way. You know, Zacchaeus was not looking to God or to Jesus for money. He's got money, but he had no peace. 
He has money. He has no joy. He has money. He can't go public. He can't walk the street boldly without security outfits around him because he was working for the Roman government. He was taking money from his own people. So they, they didn't like him. The crowd, he was not a friend of the crowd in the first place. As he made effort now to reach out to Jesus, the crowd was too much. No way for him. No way for him. This man was looking for Jesus. In Numbers chapter 21, verse 4 to 9, the children of Israel, the Bible said, that there was serpent. They did evil in the sight of God and serpent and, and, and God took his presence away. You know what? When anytime God takes his presence away, the devil will be having a field day. And it's a very dangerous thing. It's a very, very dangerous thing, I, I tell you. You can't say you want to be rich. I have seen many people who believe God, they want to be wealthy, Lord, bless me. And they are facing challenges in their life, but they don't pay their tithe. How hard is it? How hard is it? They hardly part away with their, with their resources or with their money. It's very, very hard. Why? Because when you have resources, money, wealth, when you prosper without Christ, it is hard to part away with it. Oh, I'm telling you. That's why most rich people are the most stingy people. <laughs> they are not liberal. Because the liberal so shall be made fat. And he that watered it shall be watered also. But that's for the one who had Jesus as his foundation. Who had Jesus as his foundation? Why is this person? Is what somebody asked, asked, the, asked me the other day, Apostle, why are you doing all this? I was talking to somebody from Nigeria. You give money to this. You give money to this. You are sponsoring these children. Give education scholarship. You are doing this. You are building this. You are building. I said, there is no business I don't have any business building my own empire if I have not built the kingdom of God. I don't have any business. And my wife knows when she when we wanted to get married, she asked me, what is the thing that turns you on? I don't know where that question came from, but where, wherever it came from, glory be to God. And I, it was not hard for me to answer. Anything about God turns me on. There is no other thing. Anything about God turns me on. So I'm looking for God with every available opportunity. I couldn't, God, maybe God knows that's why he called me. Because I couldn't have done any other things well. Because I am like fish inside water. When I'm, this, this ministry, this work I'm doing, oh, Jesus of night. If only you know me, if only you see my heart. I am not in competition with anybody. I'm just enjoying my the ride. I'm just enjoying this ride with God. Just, just worshiping him, just enjoying God, just celebrating God. And he's taking me one step at a time. Listen to this. Serpent entered into the camp. It was, it was killing people. But the scripture said that why he was doing, what the serpent was doing that, God spoke to Moses, take a bronze carve a bronze serpent and lift it up in a part, uh, on a particular uh, pole so that everybody in the camp will look up to that uh, bronze, bronze serpent. He said, and anybody that look at the bronze serpent shall be healed. Miraculously, they shall be healed. I don't know. Look, with God, with God, eh, with God, all things are possible are possible. The system of this world have created, given us a mindset, have, have, have systematically conditioned our mind in such a way that if they've made us to believe that if we don't follow certain of their laid down systemic rules, we will not be able to arrive at a particular outcome. But that is, if you, if you go with God, any route that God takes you through, you will land in a profitable outcome. <laughs> Any route God decides to take you through. It doesn't matter whether it's, uh, it's, um, it's uh, the route that is full of war and trouble. You will land 
at the time God wants you to land. Look at it. As the Bible says, those who feast their eyes on their wounds died. But those who chose to look away from their wounds and onto the bronze serpent were healed. Powerful. Powerful. Zacchaeus was looking for Jesus. And you know, in the wilderness, the Bible told us in the New Testament that that bronze serpent was a type of Christ. That as we look unto Jesus, the auto and finish of our faith, as we encounter Jesus, our life changes. Our marriage change. Our finances change. Our relationship change. Things will change in our life as we look up to Jesus. Looking unto the, your Savior, the only one that can save and transform your life. Looking unto Jesus. That was what Zacchaeus was doing. That's why when I was preparing this series on wisdom of prosperity and the Lord said, Let, let's go and take a, a journey with, the, with Zacchaeus. I'm like, what is the connection between Zacchaeus and wisdom for money? What, what, the last time I checked, Zacchaeus got his money from stealing taxes and taking from people. God, what is the connection? And the Lord said, it is the foundation because his foundation was wrong. Every other thing, God, he, he, he missed them. But when you have a good foundation with, with God, when Jesus is your foundation, let me tell you something. The fact that people are inside church does not mean that Jesus is their foundation, no. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Jesus must be the center of what you do with your finances. Because like, like, on Sunday, I'm going to talk about some, some very, very deep things. And it's going to be very raw and open. But let's build on this one. Look at verse 4 of Luke chapter 9. Look at verse 4. If you have your Bible there, please open it. Look at verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree, fig tree, beside the road. Look at it. For Jesus was going to pass that way. This look at look at look at action that came from a desire. He wanted to see Jesus. That was number one. He had the desire to see Jesus. He had the desire to see Jesus. And the next thing that followed, you know, many people, the, what was the reason for his desire to see Jesus? Because he was already rich. So why was he looking for Jesus? He was already wealthy. Why was he looking for Jesus? He had money. He had influence. He had connections with the Roman authority. Why was this guy looking for Jesus? Because he had no peace. It wasn't complete without Jesus. You, you may have, somebody may have money. Somebody may have, uh, have a job and have anything that will give him comfort in life and still don't have joy, and still don't have peace. No wonder Jesus said, my peace I give to you. My peace I live with you. He said, not as the word giver, because there is a way the word give their own peace. And there's a way the word give their own joy. He said, that is not the way I'm giving. This one I will give you. Oh, God. You will enjoy your life. You'll be at peace. He climbed the fig tree. Remember I said on Sunday there was another guy who, who was around the fig tree. He was around the fig tree in the book of Genesis. Remember Genesis chapter 2? Oh, yeah. Genesis chapter 3. He was They were around fig tree. They ate the fruit that God told them not to eat. And the Bible said, instead of them to open up to God, they cut the, the leaves and they used to cover themselves, thinking that that will cover them. Don't turn your vehicle to your destination. It's a vehicle. Can I repeat that? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Don't turn your vehicle, the vehicle that conveys you, that is supposed to help you see far, 
that is supposed to convey you to your place of destiny. Don't turn that thing to your destination. No. It, they, that, that particular, you know, your tree is a vehicle. The tree is a vehicle to see Jesus. Not to turn the tree now to a celebrity. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, help me. Turn your, don't turn your tree. Don't worship your tree. Value your tree. But however, that tree, what is the purpose? There are some people, their tree is their friend. Some people, their tree is their pastor. Some people, their tree is their, their, their father. Some, their tree is their mom. Some people, their tree is their brother, is their sister. Some people, their tree is their lecturer. Some people, their tree is their boss. Some people, their tree is the job they have. But in all this, your tree is a vehicle that must have Jesus in view. That must have Jesus in view. Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus knew he was lost. He knew, he knew he was lost. He knew he was a sinner. He knew he was a thief. He knew his state. He knew his condition. He knew it. You know, you know, sometimes, sometimes knowing is not enough. Action based on your knowing is what moves you to your destination. He knew. But he didn't just say, well, I know. I know. And just stop. No, no, no. When he when he came to that knowing, the Bible says he, he he located the tree. No, no, no. I must I must see Jesus. I must see Jesus. I must see Jesus. I must see Jesus. He said, I want to see Jesus. He climbed that tree. So I want to ask you, brother, I want to ask you, what tree are you climbing? And that tree you are climbing, what are you looking at? What are you looking for? Jesus? Jesus? Or success? Is success bad? No, it's not bad. But there is someone that loves you so much that he wants you to locate him so that you can secure the prosperity and the wealth and the success and the breakthrough and the marriage and the joy and everything that you are looking for. He loves you enough. He wants him to be at the center, at the core of your life. Stop chasing things. Stop chasing trees. That tree is a vehicle to see Jesus. As important as that tree is, the tree, the tree is only as useful and as relevant as long as you continue to see Jesus. To see Jesus. If this is where I stop this teaching tonight, thank you, Jesus. I believe. The Lord has volumes inside what we are talking about here. He has volumes. Zacchaeus knew. He knew he, he needed Jesus. He knew he needed, he was looking for Jesus. <laughs> he was looking for Jesus. And then the tree became the opportunity. Tree became the opportunity. I wrote something here. I said, all the while, Zacchaeus thought he was looking for Jesus, but he did not realize that Jesus was actually the one looking for him. When he climbed that tree, destiny brought him to the tree. Remember I said, don't worship your tree, but value your tree. Place value on your tree. When he got to that point, he thought that 
Ah, finally, I'm going to see him from this angle. I'm going to see him from this point. I'm, immediately, even, some people believe that when they have this, when they have that, yes, they'll be able to worship God more. They will serve God better. Just serve God. Just locate God. Just locate him. Those things, he will bring them. He will give them to you. Some people, their vehicle is hard work. Oh, I'll talk more about hard work in subsequent issues. Commitment, dedication. So, oh, when Jesus came in, in Luke chapter, in verse 5, let's look at verse 5. You know, we are going verse by verse. Look at, look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. Look at verse 5. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. <laughs> he looked at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Oh, my father. Thank you, Jesus. Zacchaeus, he said. Come down now. In King James English, make haste. Quick, quick. Make haste and come down. My first message. I must be a guest in your home today. What? So, <laughs> this was where the whole trouble came, started now. All the people that didn't talk because they never saw him. <laughs> The crowd, thank you, Jesus. The crowd, at this point, the crowd must talk. Oh, yes, sir. the crowd must open up now. Jesus and Zacchaeus, what connection is light with darkness? We should run from darkness, not embrace darkness. And Jesus Christ said, you, you people, you don't understand how this kingdom runs. <laughs> in this kingdom, we don't run away from darkness. We enter into it with the light we carry. It is the light we carry that illuminates that darkness and, and, and dispels the darkness. He said, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. To the one, listen, let me quickly say this. To anybody that is looking to Jesus, he becomes a guest in their house. I must stay in your house today. Zacchaeus, I must stay in your house today. There is something about looking unto Jesus. There is something unique about looking unto Jesus that arrests your heart. He arrested the heart of Zacchaeus. He couldn't cope. He couldn't hold it. He couldn't help, but began, he started responding immediately. Jesus. Ah. <laughs> oh, he started responding immediately. When you have an encounter with Jesus, your response is not coerced. Your response is not forced. Your response is not manipulated. It's not manipulated. It's not manipulative. When you have an encounter with Jesus, you are just raw and you say, ah, Jesus, we want you to say it. Ah, Jesus, we want you to do it. Ah, Jesus, we want you to live on it. If you are looking onto Jesus, you cannot take one more step without Jesus involved. Right before meeting Zacchaeus, there was a blind beggar. Let me take you back a little bit. In Luke chapter 18, if you read from verse 35 to 43, there was a blind beggar. He cried and he stopped Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. He cried and he, he, he said to Jesus, he said, he said, he said I, I, need, I need, I want to be healed. And the Bible said Jesus stopped and healed him. We have seen now a savior who, in spite of your status, whether you are a sinner, 
whether you are bad, whether you are good, whether you are, it doesn't matter who you are. Jesus does not discriminate. This that is a heavy word. It's a heavy word in our world of today. Jesus does not discriminate. He loves. I'll repeat that. Jesus does not discriminate. He loves. He loves. We have a savior. We have a king. Irrespective of who you are and what you are, he loves and he cares. When Jesus came, look at, look at verse 5 again. I want us to look at, to see something there. Let's look at verse 5 again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. So when Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I must be a guest in your home today. What does this mean? He made it a point. Jesus made it a point. Do you know the, the, the meaning of, of Zacchaeus? The name Zacchaeus means the righteous one or not guilty. <laughs> you see now, some of you, you are already wondering, what? Zacchaeus? What a good meaning to the name. But every time someone calls Zacchaeus by that name, Zacchaeus himself knew he felt like a hypocrite. He knew that he himself, he said, no, my name means the righteous one. He knew that he was not. He knew, he felt, he said, but Jesus decided to declare him not guilty. Now, if Jesus decided to declare you not guilty, who is he that will lay a charge against you? Look at the condition of this person. And Jesus came and still met with him. And still called him. Jesus was not concerned about any other. Jesus was just relating with him. He was, he was, he was releasing grace unmerited to him. Relating with him on a level of, I don't care what people think about you. I don't care what people said. There were two people who never cared about the condition and the status of Zacchaeus. His physical condition being shot. He, the crowd verdict about him, his own verdict about himself, two people never cared. Number one, the tree. Number two, Zacchaeus, uh, and the, uh, Jesus himself. He climbed the tree, and, I, and I'm sure the tree, never, the tree has been there. The tree did not say, don't climb me. <laughs> the tree did not complain. Oh, Jesus, God, give us men, give us women. Give us that which we need to see Jesus. Because it may not be a man. It may be a character. It may be an attribute. It may be a lifestyle that you need. It may be a connection that you need to see Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This guy that his name met so well, but his life was not reflecting what his, his name stood for. Jesus went for him. The king of kings deliberately called him Zacchaeus that day in the midst of all the crowd. Brother, sister, <laughs> everybody, everywhere, everybody gathered in the midst of the whole crowd. All of it, only Jesus to still at the base of the tree. And Jesus said, Zacchaeus, of course, at this point in time, like I always say humorously, everybody was looking on the ground. Of course, he can't be up. He must be on the ground. He's so short. That short man, that short devil, that short bad guy, that short person. He, he, everybody was looking on the ground. He must be on the floor. Well, yes. He, he's a short guy. Yes. All these short people. <laughs> Where else will he be? Everybody must have been looking on the ground. <laughs> but they didn't see him on the ground. 
his passion, his drive, his desire, his action has moved him to climb a tree. I must see Jesus. Oh, I must see Jesus. I must see Jesus. And when Jesus got to that point, he saw somebody. He didn't see crowd. He saw only that person that went for him, that, that was hungry for him, that had a desire to look for, to come for him. Oh, Jesus. The king of kings then deliberately calling Zacchaeus. Jesus didn't tell him you have to keep the Ten Commandments. You have to fulfill the law before he pronounced him not guilty. Zacchaeus, not guilty. Where are you? Grace found him. Grace found him. Listen, let me tell you, you cannot do it as the word is doing it. You can't. If you do it that way, it doesn't last. Remember, the Bible said we should not be angels of the world. Is it because they are standing on slippery ground? Ill gotten wet flies away. It flies away. Let's jump to verse 7. Let's jump quickly to verse 7. Luke chapter 19, verse 7. Let's look at this man that was declared not guilty. The righteous one, but his life was not looking like that. Verse 7, look at it. But the people were displeased. I told you. I told you the crowd will react. <laughs> the crowd will react. I'm telling you. This same crowd he was running from. They, he had been trying to see Jesus, but the crowd did not allow him to see Jesus. He couldn't. He tried. Now he climbed up a tree. The tree did not complain. Jesus did not complain. The crowd was this, they were displaced. And they said to Jesus, Look at this Jesus we are even following. He has gone to be a guest, the guest of a notorious sinner, not an ordinary sinner, a notorious sinner. Read it in the New Living Translation. They grumbled. They grumbled. Luke chapter 19, verse 7. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner. Brother, sister, let both of us, let's, we, because if you follow me from, from part one, you, on Sunday, you will understand that. Let us all agree that truly, no doubt, that Zacchaeus was a great sinner. But so are we. So were the crowd. They were not concerned about their own condition to see Jesus. Of course, many of them were there to be healed. Some of them were there to be, to be delivered from demons. Some of them were there to be set free from, the, from a bad husband, bad marriage. Some of them were there for many reasons. But one man was there to see Jesus. Because Jesus stood because of him. He stood because of him. We agree. He was a notorious sinner. But so are we. So we're the crowd. Can I say this to you? The scandal of grace says, no matter how deep you have gone, give me your hand. I can still help you out. I call it the scandal of grace. I call it scandalous grace. <laughs> Undeserved grace. Undeserved favor. And we all are undeserving of the mercies of the Lord, of the salvation of the Lord. But Jesus showed us grace. He loved us. He lavished all this thing on us. He saved us. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Can I say something to you, brothers and sisters? Because Zacchaeus received grace, the crowd got offended. 
instantly, oh, Jesus, instantly the encounter, because it was a genuine encounter, it was not, it was not based on things, it was not based on people, it was not based on whether you achieve it or you do not achieve it. It was not based on all those things. It was based on him seeing Jesus. It was Jesus. If Jesus is the foundation of your wealth, of your riches, of prosperity, you will last. You will rise. You will keep rising. You will keep rising. You may not rise all of a sudden, overnight. You know the overnight and all of a sudden something. Because many people, the God we know is the God of suddenly. We don't know the God of little by little. <laughs> we know the God of suddenly. We don't know the God of a little year, a little year. Line upon line, precept upon precept. We don't know the God of one step at a time. We only know the God of Indomie noodles, instant noodles. Now, <laughs> it's not easy. It's God. He can do it now. He can do it suddenly. He can decide to take you on a journey. He can decide to take you on a ride. Go with Jesus. Go with Jesus. Oh my God. Now, now let me let, let begin to, to round up. Let's begin to round up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Zacchaeus, let's look at his response. Zacchaeus, where are you? What do you have to say? You can't keep quiet now, Zacchaeus. No, you have to say something. What did he say? Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. I'm, like I said, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Look at verse 8. Look at his response. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and he said, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Uh -huh. Hold on. <laughs> Zacchaeus, who, what is wrong? You are, you are lying. It's not true. This man we know cannot part away with ten, 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 ten $10. No, he cannot part away with 10 naira. He cannot. We know him, oh. Jesus, don't believe him, oh. <laughs> Jesus must have been looking at the crowd. Something has happened to Zacchaeus. They don't know the journey of Zacchaeus. They only know the Zacchaeus of yesterday. They only know the things that Zacchaeus went through. Are you getting my point, brethren? Now, look at it. Some don't have sleep, sleepless nights over people, over the crowd, over the verdict of your yesterday. Move with Jesus. Yes. There are some people that will not change their mindset about you, even if you cut your hand and give to them. To, to, to show to them that you are now serious. No, they will not. Just leave them and follow Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful. I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, and if I have shifted people in their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Ah! What? What are you talking about? I will give half of my wealth to the poor. Lord, if I have shifted people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. You know why? Because he encountered Jesus. Somebody that can't give 10% of tithe. <laughs> Is it that person that will give all his salary to God? <laughs> The person of grace found Zacchaeus from the point. Listen, it's not mouth. It is action. When grace finds a man, when the man, when a man locate Jesus, when Jesus meets with a man, when there is an encounter with Jesus, nothing is more valuable than Jesus. <laughs> Zacchaeus decided to give half of his possessions to the poor. 
and to return four times the amount he had shifted from anyone. Can I, can I, can I, can I bring your, your mind back to something? Do you observe that Jesus did not tell Zacchaeus to do that? He didn't. <laughs> uh, he didn't tell Zacchaeus to do that. But Zacchaeus did it anyway. Now, can I quickly say something? If you read Luke chapter 18, you know we are studying chapter 19 now of Zacchaeus. If you read chapter 18, you will see another story, another rich man. Very rich man. The Bible called him the young ruler. He was very rich also. I told you that most of the parable, Jesus gave 37 parables in the Gospels. 16 out of them were about finances and how we, we, we are supposed to handle our finances and our possessions. Take time, study the parables of Jesus. Beautiful. You will encounter great things. You will encounter wisdom and understanding. So let's look at Zacchaeus versus the rich ruler, the rich young ruler. Look at them. Let's, let's take time to look. Let's look at them. Now, in contrast, in now the chapter before, Jesus gave the law to the young ruler because he asked to be qualified. He asked for, oh, uh, master, what must I do to make eternal life? <laughs> and Jesus told him, you know the commandments, thou shalt do this, thou shalt do that, love your neighbor as yourself, thou shalt do this. And this. He said, do all those things and then you shall be in the kingdom. And the man said to Jesus, all these things you are talking about, I have kept them from my youth. <laughs> I have kept them from my youth. Now Jesus gave him one law. He couldn't keep the law. <laughs> he ran away. One law. One law Jesus gave him. The young man, Jesus said, go and sell everything you have. Bring it. Then you can now go. Ah. <laughs> Uh, that what law does. The law incapacitates people. With the law, you cannot. With grace, you become liberal. You, 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 just, you just become, you, you become the life of Christ. You become lifeless in yourself and you are now living. You are, you, okay, you are abandoned in him. You have abandoned yourself in him. So as it were, you know, you know, Job had a knowing also. And Job said, I know my redeemer liveth. We later, we later discovered that the life of Job, when he began to take actions, then we know, oh, this was not just a knowing. There were actions that were backing up that knowing. Look at it. Now, if your boast is in your ability to keep the law, there will always be areas where you cannot meet up. You will fall short of the law. The law will always bring you, bring you to the end of yourself. That's what law. That's why in the Old Testament, none of nobody could keep it. Even those who wrote it and put it on their neck, nobody could keep it. <laughs> so when you fail in one, because according to the law, you say you have failed in all. <laughs> now. When the young, the rich young ruler boasted in his ability to have fulfill all the commandments, he still had one thing that knocked him out. But look at it. Look at it in, in chapter 19. Look at the contrast. This was another rich guy. He got his wealth in a wrong way. The one in chapter 18 was a nice guy. He was keeping the law. He was keeping it, but one he couldn't keep, knock him out. But look at chapter 19. The person that was not keeping the law right from Adam, <laughs> he was so notorious and everybody knew him. He had wealth gotten by, by mischief and by stealing and by defrauding people. But when grace appeared to him, he said, all that I have, half of what I have, I give to the poor. 
Huh? What is the difference between these two? One operated by trying to do. The other one embraced the grace that was made available through Jesus. He became selfless. He became selfless. And that was how his life began to, to change. So Jesus gave grace to a tax collector, a great sinner who responded by giving away much of his money. Much of it. Can I say this? Grace, um, this is the last statement I'm going to make, and then we'll pray. Grace, the grace that Jesus gives, the grace of God changes the way you handle money. I'll repeat that. The grace of Jesus, if truly you have found grace, if truly I have found grace, the grace of God changes the very way you handle money. It will change. It will change. It will change. It will change. Can you close your eyes and let's pray before we take any question? Can you, can you just pray and say, Lord, I receive this grace for effortless transformation. Jesus, I receive the grace for effortless transformation. Effortless transformation. Effortless. Effortless. Effortless transformation. Jesus never asked Zacchaeus to do anything. He didn't ask Zacchaeus for money. When Jesus saves people, when Jesus heals people, he doesn't ask them to bring money. He doesn't ask them, say, oh, come and do this. You know, there are so many gimmicks, gimmicks everywhere today. If you can sow $1,000, you will, God will give you $10,000. These are manipulated. Most of you know me very well. I, I don't do those kind of things. These are manipulated. Jesus ask you to come. If you meet Jesus, you will become selfless. You will be transformed. Things will change. You see, and as you begin to commit yourself to Jesus, you begin to prosper. And I have told you, prosperity is not only financial. Prosperity is all around. Prosperity is all around. It's all around. I know a man one of my elders, when he was working and doing very well, he was not faithful to his kingdom giving and everything. When you ask him to give uh, first fruit, he will say, eh, how will I survive? By the time he lost his job and he came back to square zero, <laughs> the money that was so big for him that time to give, he didn't have it anymore. And then he called me. I was here in Canada, and, and I said, "Sir, you you disappointed God some time ago." And I told him, "I said that you know I will, I will always tell you the truth." He said, "Yes, yes, yes, Pastor, yes." I said, "So this was what you did: return back." People complain that God is not working for them, but they are not ready to listen to God. They're not ready. Return back to the commitments of the kingdom. Return back to that wish. God has called you to do. Return back to your commitment. Begin to give your tithe. Begin to take things of God serious. And this particular business that he was telling me he wanted to start, some, somebody that was, it was okay. I said, I will bless this money for you. But it's not about me just blessing the money. It's about you committing yourself to the demands of the kingdom. And you will see if the king of the kingdom will not notice you on top of that tree, he will notice you and he will bless you. Just today we were talking and it's, I mean, yesterday we were talking and it's like, Pastor, Apostle, my life has changed. Now I understand the ways, the, thing, the way God does these things. I say, yes. It is not by age. It is by revelation. You can read the same verse of the Bible over and over again, and when your eyes not open to it, you will not see anything. It doesn't matter whether you are apostle or whether you are a bishop, but the day that you read it and God opens your eyes to it, please don't explain it away. Commit yourself to that demands of that, of that word, and your life will change. The first wisdom 
that you must handle is to make Jesus the foundation of your wealth, of your riches, of your money, of your prosperity. True prosperity is founded solidly on God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. No man, Nicodemus understood this. He said, no man can do these things except God be with him. No man, no man can do this except God be with him. You are here for a reason tonight. You are hearing this message for a purpose tonight. I pray that God himself will take you on your own journey. Not my, I have my journey. You have your journey with God. That God will take you on your own journey. That you will begin to rise. You begin to rise. You begin to prosper. You begin to increase. Because even Jesus increased. You will begin to increase in different areas of your life. You begin to prosper in your soul, in your spirit, in your body, in your finances, in your marriage, in your Christian life. You begin to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, my God. We will enjoy you. We will enjoy you. We will not serve you in vain. We will enjoy you, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Zacchaeus. We have not finished here. We are going more. Next time, we are going to study more into this life of this man. You will see what happened next in his life. Father, we thank you. We give you praise and the glory. Let this word, let this word not stand against us on that last day, but let it turn for us that we heard it. We took action, we took steps, and things changed in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.